Hello, everybody, and welcome to another conversation time. It is 9.30, September 30th. We are at the end. Don't blink. No, but the best month is next. I don't know about that. It is. It is. It's the best month, period. Um, you guys know how this works. If you are in here with us, say hello, conversate with us. It is called conversation time for a reason. We've got a couple things, a couple topics today that are kind of interactive, so we'll need your thoughts and opinions and whatnot on it. Obviously, we want them on all of it, but there's be, you know, questions and whatnot we'll ask your opinion on. So, what are we starting off with? We always get started off with uh, movies and entertainment, TV shows. There's a lot different, there's a lot of them today that, um... Sydney said, why are we talking about paper plates? You just got to tune in and watch. Got to tune in. What's your name? See. Is that what you put on there? Yeah, paper plates. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so we'll just get started. So probably the most, uh, one of the most, I won't say the most, one of the most, hello, hello, uh, talked about, what's the word? It's not a movie, series. Mini series that was on this week is Monster, a Jeffrey Dahmer story. I think the most controversial. Why is it controversial? It's weird. It's a weird dynamic because it definitely flooded the timelines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always tune into Facebook to see what people are talking about on um, online, their opinions, their reviews, because they're going to give you the good, they're going to give you the bad, they're going to give you the ugly. <laughs> but it's weird that the amount of people that came out to watch a serial killer documentary. I don't think you really understand how big this true crime fan is. And like, it, is. it's a cult following. We had this conversation the other day because like the amount of women that were tuning in and then you even put something on there and was like, yeah, I went back and then I watched the, uh, the true series just to see <laughs> how it, how it correlated uh, between the two. And I'm like, cause I just wanted to see it. Cause you know, Netflix, sometimes they fabricate a lot of things. Um, and just to make sure that it, it was as accurate, you know, like I can do anything about it just to see how um, but, accurate it was. And see, and that was a that was a lot of the comments, too, is that it was re-traumatizing the family members who watched it. But and this is I don't want to sound insensitive about it. The story of Jeffrey Dahmer and just any of them in general have been told several times. Numerous, doing, because this is like this is like the third um, third edition. Because and there's another one coming out on the seventh. And my thing is. All right, we understand what, what this guy did. We understand mm -hmm. he was a serial killer. Mm -hmm. my, my question that I'm always going to ask, why? Why, why was he? No, I mean, we know why he was, but the thing, why do we continue putting out series, movies, documentaries, just going over this, this person over and over again? Like, like, like my mom said, we, we continue re-traumatizing family members, victims, but we keep putting out the same information. Like like you said, you went back, you looked at the story again. Nothing changed. No. It's the same it's the same uh the same story retold with a different with a different uh actor. It is, portraying. but some of them also have more information than the others do. And I look at it from the perspective as maybe and I'm not saying obviously this is how it is, but maybe people keep re not reinventing, telling the story so you can look for signs of the like this in other people and you can stop it before it gets too far. Because if you've watched it, um, and it's not a spoiler alert, like I said, the whole thing's been on TV and, and podcasts and everything for, for years. Um, the, oh. woman who, the woman who Niecy Nash portrayed, she tried calling the cops several times before they finally came and arrested him um, so she saw the signs and everything like that, too. So I see it as more of an awareness thing. And it is a true crime situation. Don't give me that. But Don't awareness. give me. How many, how many times do you need to be aware? Because you watch the one with um, Evan Peters. He played. He did this very time. good in this one. Um, well, who was the other guy? Uh, the high school musical guy. Zach Efron. Zach he did get on that one, he too. Played, he did He decent. played a character of him. And I'm sure there's been countless others. I'm sure uh, Lifetime, they did a portrayal of Jeffrey Dahmer. And it's getting to the point now where it's like it's glorifying the serial killer because you have this cult following and people are just tuning in. They're like only two of his victims were um, underage. The rest of them were all adults. Um, so not the, like it makes it any better. To, but to the point now where I'm, I'm seeing memes going out like they had his glasses and it's like, oh, yeah, oh. let me let me wear these. Cause it's like, not funny. It's really not funny. And a lot of people are starting to glorify it, I think. And that's where the, the fine line is, is what, you know, where it becomes um a fad 
I guess would be the best term for it or um and like, a historical piece. And like Dick it, just I said, guess. people like to tell the stories of the ones that are well known. You won't see a movie about Israel Keys anytime soon because it doesn't fit the narrative that people have of what serial killers are. And I can't even tell you who that was. And, and see, like, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, the ones that are glorified, I think this one's getting so much attention because I know when they we're talking about Zach Efron just because of uh, like the personality and the mm-hmm. demeanor of it. I mean, was he, was he blonde eyed? Mm-hmm. Blonde eyed? He was uh, a very. Uh, blonde hair, blue eyes. He was a, and, supposedly an attractive man. Um, and so, yeah, you, if you have attractive serial killers, like you said, Ted Bundy it, was the same way. See, though. yeah, so it, it's fitting. It's fitting that mold where people. That's who. No, Zach Efron t- played okay. Ted Bundy. All right. All right. Yeah. But, so, and then there was a reference in here too at the end, and I just saw something about it, and I don't know if this is true or not, but there was a reference to um, John Wayne Gacy um, in the final episode. I think it was. They just showed a little like blurb or whatever you want to call it on him. So I don't know if that's. Netflix way of saying that they're going to do another show on him. They were in the same time frame. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. Because I mean, as they saw with this series, oh, it did numbers, drama sales, sure. um, controversy, crimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, is it, that true? And, and especially like the number of women that I saw just yeah. tuning in. Like it, it, it's kind of frightening. It is a little disturbing. You all to sit around watch true crimes, all those Law and Order SVU shows, and, and and just. And even the fact that he was just like, oh, yeah, I went back and I watched another documentary. Like, it's how, just, how do you sleep at night? I sleep fine. <laughs> that's the scary thing, as I do. But And that's the thing. There's a lot. And I, I would say probably majority of women are the ones who who follow a lot of this stuff, too. There's Because you've got, I know, of at least two or three, I guess they're influencers. I don't know. But their specialty is true crime, too. But what they do as well, because they're women, so... At least one or two of them. She's, um, oh, what's her name? Bailey. I'm going to mess up her last name. It's like Sarian or something. I'm going to mess it up. But she does makeup and then talks about these true crime stories while she's doing her makeup. So mm. It's a makeup tutorial as well as true crime podcast. Um, and there's several different women who have these podcasts and whatnot. Um, so it's a, it's, I wouldn't say it's a cult following. Yeah, it's, you're right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's spooky season. And, and on top of that, um, I think one of the most controversial films that's coming out this year also is the one on Emmett Till that oh. comes out in October. Um, oh, just just watching that trailer, it um, was rough. I mean, who, who doesn't know the story of Emmett Till at mm-hmm. this point? If you don't, definitely do your history. Um, look at it. Watching the trailer, I, I, I got chills myself mm-hmm. just hearing about the story growing up, and then actually then putting this this film out. Um, and like we said, we talk about um, uh, traumatizing. Uh, especially in the black community, there there was a lot of controversy behind this film because it's it was saying how uh, why do we have to keep telling these stories that that's that's um, traumatizing for the black experience for what we what we've gone through. But I mean, we continue telling stories about Ted Bundy and, and um, Jeffrey Dahmer. I think the story of Emmett Till mm-hmm. is so important to oh, have yeah. to be able to tell, especially now that we're getting more traction, especially with the woman when she came back out. And had said that the whole the whole situation was a lie and faced no consequences, no consequences at all. So actually, having um, being able to tell these stories is important because we don't want to have to relive history, mm-hmm. especially now in in the time that that we're in. We definitely shouldn't be reliving this this type of history over and over no, again. We should, and that's the thing is we're so close to to going back further and further. Unfortunately, we keep seeing stories and. Um, everything in the news it doesn't seem like we're progressing anywhere but that's what I said too as far as with the serial call it's a lot sometimes but I think you need to know some of these stories to know signs of whatnot and then just like you said you need to know your history because if you don't know you're doomed to repeat it exactly so um they said they tried to suppress the truth for so long oh yeah and And they're um, still they still are they still are and and we were getting bits and pieces um especially in that Lovecraft County uh, uh country county with Lovecraft, I, I just called it Lovecraft, <laughs> but um, they even made a reference in one of the episodes. That mm-hmm. was a heavy episode, also. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to HBO for for putting that out. But, I wish uh, they would also, renewed it. Yeah, I think it was too heavy for people to, um, to watch. People don't want to watch the truth. That's really what but, it comes um, down to. Just just the way they they were telling history, and also from a um, from a historic standpoint, but also having some of that like that magic and that um, mm-hmm. I don't want to call it witchcraft because it wasn't wasn't really witchcraft, wasn't in there. it? I don't know, but it had an element of it. But cause, you know, you be big on like Harry Potter and all those other films like Damien. that. I've I've never. This was the first time that I actually saw it from like 
a black point of view where yeah. where we had black characters that were actually could tell the history of having like magic books and, and using mm-hmm. um, rituals and doing things like that. So I, yeah, I got I got caught up in it. Well, I mean, isn't that like the kind of same concept of voodoo? Yeah. So uh, you know, but, but I mean, even even looking back in um, in ancient cultures, what we consider voodoo and witch doctors and medicine doctors now, how mm-hmm. how um, Western civilizations came in, they were like, oh, they're practicing magic and witchcraft. But those were the healing doctors. They were out there using herbs and roots to be able to. Um, heal or mm-hmm. to 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 portray different things or get closer to the ancestors. So, I mean, we, stories need to be told. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna definitely tune in and, and oh, check yeah. out well, that that teal movie. We're gonna watch it. It's gonna be an event for sure. It's gonna be um, hard to watch. I think if you've seen the trailer or if you haven't, go on YouTube and look it up. I believe it's out there now. It is tough. It's tough to watch, but I think it's gonna be a good movie. And the guy, if you uh, follow All American, the boy who plays the little brother is playing um, Emmett Till, I believe, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's gotten a lot of roles. Um, just from the time <clears throat> I've seen him in uh, All-American to now where he's getting a lot of um, bigger roles. I think this is going to be his like first standalone movie where he's actually the uh, main character. Mm-hmm. But I've seen him in like some um, other supporting supporting cast roles. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see good. what that young man does. So, um, um, On a brighter note, yeah, Damien, spooky season. With that, uh, Disney Plus might crash tonight because Hocus Pocus 2 is here. I never got in. I never really liked Hocus Pocus. I I don't even know if I saw it the whole way through because it used to scare me. The guy that they came out, the little zombie dude that came out of the the ground that had his mouth shown, that I couldn't get past that point. Mom, how how many years? um, Almost 30 years since the original. 29. The original was released in um, 1993. Yep. Definitely our generation, you know. Oh, yeah. So, Almost definitely. So they're definitely going to have that that following. Um, they, they said, well, people have already been watching it today. Yeah, they said Hocus Pocus is definitely a cult classic. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, the millennials were definitely going to tune in. You know, we're going to have that on there. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, Gerard, he knows what it is. Hocus Pocus is legendary. I know. I got to watch it. I got to give it another chance. Because I was the same way with no, um, Nightmare Before Christmas. It used to scare me as a kid, too. And now it's one of my favorite movies. So I got to go back. Um, and watch it, but I'm not in the same thing too. I'm not a huge fan of Sarah. Sarah Jessica hey, Parker. hey, 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 Brian, Brian, I got to, I got to shout out Brian first, first okay. and foremost. Uh, that's, that's my Longwood, my Longwood boy right there. Hi. But um, yeah, no spoiler alerts, man. I'm, I, I look forward <laughs> to hopefully, you know, the weather, the weather's kind of dreary right now, so this is perfect Netflix and chill opportunities. You know, though, though, a couple movies on, check it out, but um. Scotty, I know, man. You you popped up. I'm, I'm calling you by your government on here. <laughs> <laughs> Watching it tomorrow, popcorn and spooky Scorpio. Yeah, Scorpio season is <laughs> among us. Oh no, it's not. Not yet. Almost. We got to get through Libra <laughs> yeah, season yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, we're entering that Scorpio season. So all the Scorpios on the line. I know my mom's somewhere. <laughs> so you don't I act like rest. you don't love a Scorpio. Come on, you know where the You've been best. gone for too long, man. We're going with governments. We're a little bit more distinguished now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, Hocus Pocus too. I'm, I'm definitely going to sit in. Um, well, I got to watch I'm the a, first one. Well, yeah, yeah, we can run that back. You know, I'm a 90s baby, so anytime I can I can have, uh, what? Yeah, 80s, 90s. Yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I'm just yeah, looking at it. No, you were. You were born in 89, but yeah. We're you know, barely 80s baby. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. I got to do it one time for the culture. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I'll report back. No spoiler alerts. Anywhere. People, yeah, people are like, oh, it's not that good. They're always going to trash yeah. something. Yeah, everything. It's also everybody. been 30 years. Like, these, these women the have fact, obviously aged. Fact, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that they brought the original the original yeah. cast back for it. Um, it. It'll be a good time, definitely. I mean, even if it is trash, it's like, hey, it's 30 years in the making. Well, and see, that's what I was saying, too. Like, uh, you know, they're doing sequels to a lot of these movies now that I saw. I just, I was scrolling through today. And you remember the, the Disney movie Under Wraps? Yeah. They did an Under Wraps, too. And I'm seeing a lot because you know Disney Plus, they just put whatever they want out nowadays. So, um, so you know, they're just yeah, they're just gonna load us up with content. Oh yeah, if it's either gonna be a series or it's gonna be um, a whole other movie. So what other you know what other movies would you like Disney or not? Would you like to see sequels of? I'd like to see because I do love Nightmare Before Christmas. I'd like to see another one of those. 
And I was, uh, I just recently realized that Nightmare Before Christmas was talking Hell about me. Halloween. I never, Have you watched the movie? I watched it with you. You be, you forced me to watch these I didn't movies force you every to do year. Anything. Every year, it's always at Charlie Brown's it's Christmas. Tradition. It's tradition. It's Nightmare Before And now we've Christmas. got a son to do it with. Yeah, yeah, we got to yeah. watch, um, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Here, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can start them little traditions up with him, and then I guess I'll. You got to be a part of it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to check it out. Um, speaking of Disney. Ryan Reynolds went on. He made an announcement. Oh, Ryan. Uh, it, it was a cool way he did it, too, because he was like, uh, yeah, I wanted to have a surprise for y'all. I wanted, to, uh, wanted something that's really going to get y'all excited. He was like, I couldn't think of nothing. And then um, Hugh Jackman uh, walked in behind him. And he was like, hey, Hugh, you want to play uh, Wolverine one more time? He was like, sure, Ryan. So um, that was a little spoiler alert. Uh, we're getting another Hugh Jackman Wolverine um, in Deadpool three, mm-hmm. so I, I'm excited for that. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big Marvel fan. On, on top of that, so which I gotta watch origin story. Yeah, yeah, we, we're gonna Wolverine. check out uh, Wolverine origins. You know, I'm I'm disappointed in you for not not so being sorry. on top of your Marvel game. No, especially no. now that they're introducing these um these mutants into the MCU. Well, because that wasn't Wolverine. Wasn't that that's not DC? It's um, oh, whoa, watch your mouth. I know, but they're bringing um. X-Men. X-Men. X-Men, Fantastic Had, Four. Yeah, I've yeah. seen Fantastic Four. Well, I saw the one with, oh, uh, what's his face? Yeah, yeah, you've seen some of them. Yeah, I've seen a couple of them. But I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to get into I'm. I guess you can say I'm mainstream Because, Marvel. yeah, yeah, you're you're Tony Stark's Iron Man, yes. Hulk, all them, that Marvel. But you got to go, like, I'm talking about the comic books with X-Men, and, like, the Amazing Spider-Man, those, like, the, the OGs. I mean, I grew up with the Amazing the Spider-Man, but I didn't read the comic books. Yeah, but, I mean, you never watch, like, you know, Saturday, Saturday morning cartoons. You get you a nice big bowl of cereal, go downstairs, and you just start watching the cartoons about, I like, did, 8 o'clock. But know. ours weren't the same cartoons. Uh, I didn't like gargoyles. Oh, my. I did not like Gargoyle. Sorry, y'all. I'm still not even really a fan of the Amazing Spider-Man cartoon. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. Look, you can have Brayden on that side of stuff. And I've got the Disney side as far as, well, and Charlie Brown. That's cool. But um, back to Netflix. Um, Tyler Perry just put out a new movie on Netflix, um, A Jazz Man's Blues. It's got mixed reviews. I I watch it. You know, I'm going to support Tyler, what he puts out. Uh, I, I was about seventy percent. It was, it was. I, the storyline was cool. The acting was so. It was hard. traditional. It was traditional it was Tyler so Perry hard. acting. The ending, I'd be feeling like Tyler gets to the end of movies and like, all right, you know, let's just wrap it up. I mean, I, I liked it. I enjoyed the movie. Um, it had a good little, good storyline. Yeah. Some parts were really upsetting me. Some stuff I was just like, you know, this doesn't even make sense. But yeah. you know, you know, Tyler, I'm I'm gonna watch it. It was a different type of it was a different type of movie from right. what we're used to. I think he said he wrote this probably about twenty something years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom said it was his best work in a long time. Yeah, and it wasn't your traditional like Tyler Perry, Medea. Uh, Medea. Um, it wasn't it wasn't for like comical laughs or anything like that. It was more of like a drama. Um, finding young love would what people go through not people but but this these individuals were going through for love and i mean it was it was good um hopefully we can see more of of these type of stories from tyler um just to just to add to his arsenal because i mean like i say all the time i'm never going to be disappointed of a netflix movie if i'm just sitting at home and can just throw something on and watch it i wouldn't say that i wouldn't go that far because even if i'm just sitting at home even if i don't have to pay for it and we watch it on cinema if it's not good i'm still gonna be disappointed i don't want to hear that that's two hours of my life that god awful nicholas cage movie (laughs) it's nicholas cage you know it's not gonna be the greatest to begin with no which i don't know why people keep saying nicholas cage is not a good actor i think he's decent at best i've seen some bad actors and he's all right yeah, my mom said a uh, colorism and racism intersection yeah yeah definitely it, ha- it had a lot of layers um in the movie mm-hmm. um i definitely enjoyed uh the work that he put out with it like i said it's not your traditional tyler perry you're not going to be there medea with the jokes which and- i think he's trying not i think he's trying to like end the medea um segment because he killed her no nah, well, man they're about to go to london or something weird i'm telling you watch uh, i got oh, a feeling that crossover that he did i with got the, a feeling he's gonna do something where like medea winds up in london doing something well i think he will because you remember did you watch that movie with the he brought the actor who plays like the the, the uk version yeah. of medea mm-hmm. 
Because they kept saying, you need to bring him over. He's hilarious, too. He really just looks like Mrs. Doubtfire, rest mm-hmm. in peace, Robin Williams. But, and I think that was the segue with that is so she he can take her international. But I thought that he killed her off at one point. I, don't I, don't know. Know. I think Medea is just one of those characters that um, Tyler can always reach back, pull out, and people are still going to follow because she, because of just funny. i mean yeah i mean it's for a good time um, but he does good with he's shown that he does well with serious movies so hopefully he starts stepping back into yeah, that y'all, role y'all forget and, he played tyler cross alex alex cross alex cross it, it was a book it sounds familiar and it's a series um patterson james was, patterson yeah oh, okay. okay so yeah he's done that um i think he's been in some star wars movies so i mean yeah i mean tyler tyler is, is a versatile actor slash director slash businessman i mean in, anything for the movie yeah. well i mean to think that he started it as a homeless man mm-hmm. to be where he is now and has his own studio in atlanta i think he's doing fairly well for himself studio in atlanta or he owns part of atlanta but things like between him and rick ross and they own just yeah. atlanta pretty much i'm surprised you didn't have on here um what is it and uh, I don't know. Thing? I don't know Andor? anything about Andor. What they even Star said, Wars? "Yeah," I, and that's the thing. They got so many Star Wars worlds at this point. I can't keep up with it. But um, She Hulk on um, Disney Plus. They said it's, it's continuing to get high ratings. It's even that's beating funny. Andor. I mean, I enjoy it. it. It's funny. It doesn't take too much thought process. I mean, and it, it's a it's a good break from the Marvel universe mm-hmm. to be able to come and watch these shows. So, I mean, I enjoy watching it. Uh, Week well, after week. you got to credit the woman who's playing her too, and I, unfortunately, I don't know what her name is. But I think she's a good reason as to why it's doing as well as it is, because she's got that good banter. They do a lot mm-hmm. of the break in the fourth wall where she's talking directly to the camera, and you know some people can overdo it, and it's just cheesy. They only do it every now and again, and it's pretty good. So I mean, they've got characters that they had in the actual movies and whatnot too, mm-hmm. and um, they incorporate them well and have their own little storyline. So I think it's going to be good. I think Wong is going to end up getting a spinoff. Probably. With yeah. that girl. Yeah. No, nah, I hope not. Watch. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see what goes on. It's going to be good, though. Um, Another movie on Netflix. They just put out that Marilyn Monroe movie, Blonde. I'm going to check that out. You might be by yourself. I don't... That's fine. I mean, you heard of, Mar- I heard of Marilyn Monroe, but I'm just like, I don't care. That's fine. What, what she do for my culture? You don't have she to watch her. She ain't pushed no culture forward. You ain't got to watch her. No, somebody going to be on here. Oh, my God. Why would you say that? But what'd she do? I'll wait. Nobody even saying nothing in the chat. They're just like, oh, okay. Didn't even know the movie was out. But uh, yeah, yeah forcing you to watch it. You could watch it and you could report back. Let okay. us know. Uh, I think there was a lot of controversy with that movie. Also, that just came out. Why? Because they they did a deep dive on her life. I think it was drumming up some skeletons at the closets and just talking about the um, abuse and scandals and things that went. I mean, we knew she was involved with with a few different scandals and whatnot. So it's not like she was just an innocent little girl over here. Mar- Marilyn Monroe is not even her her actual name. That wasn't her name. No. Oh, psh, see, I'm lost already. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Damien. Um, Halloween ends oh is about Can to come out. Just I hope this is the last this one. Has to be it. I hope that man has been it. running for forty years. I'm like, let him rest. I'm like, I don't even know what his purpose is. Jamie anymore. ain't got that much juice in her left. The last one I thought was the last one. That's what they said. They're going to keep doing it as long as they're getting money it's off a of cult, it. It's a cult following. That one definitely is. I can't. I just can't get behind it. Watch it. She has blonde saved to watch. She was a complex person. I mean, yeah, we know that. I, I think that's the social worker in you because, you know, I don't like I don't like sitting around watching stuff with too much complexities. And I'm watched Elvis. No, Elvis was a good movie, though. I didn't have nothing to do with your culture either. He stole your culture. I mean, but no, I... You always hear about Elvis. I mean, it was a good movie. And plus the guy that was doing the directing, he did The Great Gatsby. And, you know, I like musicals. I watched, um, what was it? You Freddie do Mercury. not like musicals. I like musicals about, like. You I like biopics. Yeah. What was it? Um, what was the Queen? Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody was a good one. I like the Rocket one Rocket Man with, uh, was good. Rocket Man was great. We've yeah. seen that a couple times yeah. now. If you have, if you have, if you like Elton John and you like, rock, you need to watch Rocket I'm gonna Man. Watch, I'm going to watch the Whitney Houston one when that comes out. It's going to be good. Um, the one they did with um, New Edition, I checked out. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. Biopics. I don't like just, like you said, I'm not watching a great showman. That's a good one. Um, it's not mean? my type of movie. Is Little Mermaid, is that a musical? We have to see Little Mermaid. Not watching that. It's Disney, of course it is. She sings in the trailer. Why oh, would it not be? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I didn't watch the trailer for Little Mermaid. 
Mm, mm, I didn't mm. watch it. You want to talk about seeing stuff for the culture? That would be for the culture. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? I just fall asleep. If Will Smith wasn't playing the genie, I wouldn't oh, have watched Lord. Aladdin. It was a good one. You got to admit. I wouldn't have watched Aladdin. Don't talk to me about not watching good movies. Speaking of music, um, rest in peace to Coolio. Oh, I'm so sad. Recently passed. Um, Thank you, Sydney. We'll go watch 59 it. years old. They said he was found unresponsive. Um, it said it performed resurrection efforts for approximately 45 minutes before being retouched. Oh, I said resurrection. <laughs> Bring them back. <laughs> they might still be trying that. I hope not. I hope not. But, um, jeez. But, uh, yeah. Rest in peace. Uh, Coolio. They, they, they said that is a uh, gangster's paradise. It's like one in six in the U.S. right now. Oh, I'm sure it is. Because, of course, everybody's going to play that when they do a video of him saying, that, oh, he's resting in gangster's paradise. Somebody did post that. Day. I was just like. Yeah, I was waiting on it. I'm sorry for him. But, I mean, they said that it's not, from what they can tell, there was no foul play involved, no drugs or alcohol or anything like that. But they won't know anything further, obviously, until they do an autopsy. Um, but shortly before 5 o'clock, what was it, Wednesday? I think so. Yeah. He was pronounced dead. So hopefully we'll see what else happened with that. Um, it sucks because I was just scrolling through Facebook and that's the first thing that popped up. So everybody's on it. Yeah. I remember just talking about uh, the iconic um, Kenan and Kel theme song. He did do yeah. Kenan and Kel. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. And I feel bad, but that man was holding on to those braids as long as he could. I, it was I down to I'll like three Ill. little I'll speak braids. on the departed. You would have before. He's just recently departed. He'll give it a week. Uh, what else we got here? Hurricane Ian. Is this which? Are there two hurricanes happening right no, now? No, it's just or one. Or is it just right the now. one? It's just the one. There was Fiona, and I think um, I think that one's done. Or it's dissipated. Whatever. I don't know how it works, but her, her, Fiona and Ian were um, going around the same time. But now it's just Hurricane, hurricane Ian, I believe. So um, Hurricane Ian hit Florida, the the southwest coast of Florida yesterday as a Category 4. Mm. Um, if you've seen some of the damage down there, it looks pretty bad. It's, it's And there's still people who would not evacuate. Like, I can understand if you don't have the means to evacuate. But if you do and you decide not to, you can't really complain too much about what happens. But we see this, we see this often when we have these um, natural disasters that occur. I mean... I get an incense. I mean, that's your home. You think you can just ride it out the wave? But you, you, especially if you live in Florida and these in coastal areas like this, you know how hurricanes are and how bad they can be. And it's to the point now, it's so bad where I saw something. We are saying like insurance companies aren't going to pay mm-hmm. for the damages that are, have it's been too done. Too much. That's way too much. I know somebody, um, and this is just in North Carolina, they had a home and it was... It may have been a strong storm. It may have just flood insurance something, but they had flood insurance and the insurance to cover. But they said they just weren't going to, and it blew off his whole roof. Mm. I think this was a while ago. This wasn't this, but um, yeah. I mean, you got to think if you've seen some of the video footage, these houses are demolished. Mm-hmm. Like, there's nothing to go. So you're paying for a whole new house. So great, and I think that's obviously what your insurance is for. But it, I can imagine having to shell out millions of dollars for some of these homes. But it's moving up the coast now, so it's going to um, it's going to be through North and South Carolina and um, Georgia. I think it said it touched George. It's excuse me. It touched landfall near Georgetown, South Carolina today as a Category One. So we're I think that's what the rain and stuff that we're getting here is coming from. So it's not going to mm-hmm. be anywhere near as bad, but um, we're still seeing some of the after effects yeah, of it too. Yeah, seeing a little little remnants. But um, I talked to a couple people that are in North Carolina. They're saying um, that are closer to the coast. Um, just about the amount of rain and um, wind and things that are mm-hmm. happening right now. So. Wind can be wind can be just as damaging, but um, I don't think obviously we're they're going to have as many problems as Florida is having right now. So prayers out to them. Hopefully everything mm-hmm. is okay and it's not like a you know, Hurricane Katrina situation. So no, nah, no, I don't think it's I don't think it's well. That. The dam broke there. That's why. Yeah, that was as catastrophic as it was, but um. Moving on, so you, Sydney, you wanted to know why we are talking about paper plates. So if you've seen this post going around, this was about a week or so ago, and I don't know who this man is, but I, I would assume he, I, I guess that's Jesus, Jesus, 
since he spells it G-E-S-U-S, I guess he wants black, to black Jesus. Jesus? Okay. So he made a post last week about eating food on a paper plate. Um, he said, quote, there was a picture of somebody posted a, um, posted a picture of like hibachi or something. It looked really, really good, but it was served on a paper plate. So he said, quote, food looks so good, but one thing's throwing me off. I hate paper plates. I would have slung that plate in the street so fast. Like, how dare you feed God on a paper plate? So people were going crazy on this. You know, he's so full of himself. How do you compare yourself to God? Blah, blah, blah. I agree with that. But then on the other side, people are saying, well, I would never serve my significant other food on a paper plate. So, and I don't know if that was the woman. I, don't, I think he was just sharing a post. I don't necessarily think that was his girlfriend or anything like that. But um, people were going crazy on it, just two different ways. So what are your thoughts? I mean, I serve you. Not necessarily paper, but styrofoam. You got paper plates, yeah. I'd rather use paper plates because it's less mess to clean up. I don't care. I appreciate the gesture for food. People sitting there getting upset. Oh, I can't eat on paper plate. I need fine china. For what? And sterling silver. Are you going to wash said plate after we're done? Like, I don't understand. What are you guilty for? Guilty for what? Because I'm not, I'm, look, as long as it's the food that counts. I'm not worried about the plate that it are comes you, on. Are you guilty for serving paper plate? Nah, no, you're not. Because you get on me when I'm at the house trying to use a paper plate. And like, nah, nah, yeah. get, the, get, the, get the dishes. Yeah. I'm like, well, I got to use a dish. Put this on this plate. So when I'm it done, it works just as well. It right has serves the same purpose. It might not be as strong, but that's why you double even, up. Even to the point, because, you know, when you were growing up, like, you had that room and that, that fine china oh, that cabinet mm -hmm. in the house that you could only pull out for the, for the good meals or the holiday meals. We had a good living room. Yeah, mm -hmm. like now you can only eat in there on like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yep. and That was a special event place. We don't have those anymore for some reason. Cause we're older now. It's like, oh, you know. But yeah, it's, it's cool. But I mean, that's <clears> just, that was the, I was my, I wanted to know what y'all's thoughts were on it. Do you feed your significant other on papers plate, paper plates or is it the meal that's being served? Is there some stigma behind it? I don't really understand it. I think... That's a good question. Is there a particular meal that can be served on paper plates? Like if you're having hot dogs and hamburgers, do they go on paper plates? And if you're having a uh, top sirloin or filet, does that go on, on the fine china? I don't know, but I got two steaks in there. You might still be getting it on a paper plate. So <laughs> I'm just letting you know now. Oh, I'm getting a meal. I'm cool. That's the thing. I think you should really just be happy that you're getting a meal, that they took the time out to cook for you if it's something. And I'm telling you, too, that hibachi looked good. I use paper plates all the time. His behind will just starve and wash dishes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Is, are you, if you're contributing, like we've got it, um, we'll start formal. Okay. Well, that'll be nice. He'll like that. But we, you know, we've got a system here that whoever cooks, the other person does the dishes or does the cleanup. So, and, you know, if you've got that going, then that's, that's something different that, they do whatever you want to put it on whatever kind of plate or bowl you want to. But if not, and one person's doing the cooking and the cleaning, you, yeah, I'm going to put it on a paper plate. That's one less thing I got to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just balance. You got to find that balance. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with him. I need more insight. Cause. Well, somebody I know shared his post and was saying about all this stuff. And I don't know if he's like an influence. I, really, I don't know who this man is. I've never seen any or heard anything about him. Um, and she shared his post and said some stuff about it too. He messaged her and was like, something to the like, why are you putting me on blast? Blah, blah, blah. This, that, because and the yeah, other. it could be on the inverse side. Like some of these meals I see people preparing, they don't even belong on no plates. They just, just go straight in the trash. To the trash. Some They're of not them. even cooked. Nah. So somebody was like, I saw one woman the other day was talking about it. shrimp and grits. Yeah. And I knew she was messing up because it's supposed to be grits and shrimp. No, you had it right the oh, first time. She, she had, had grits and shrimp. It was supposed to be shrimp, yeah. And, like, so she opens up the bag to prepare the meal, just dumps it in the water, doesn't clean the shrimp, doesn't detail it, does nothing, just dumps it in there, and then proceeds to take it out. Put Didn't put no, no, no seasoning or season. nothing. There was no, nothing. No seasoning on the seafood at all. And then she just... Didn't even drain the water off, just scooped it out of the pot. It dumps it on top of the grits. And that was just like, that's all water. And she thought it was delicious. But if you if you look the video, her son or somebody's in the background talking like, you know, my mom don't do a lot of cooking. So this is something simple for her. And she thinks she's she's killing it. She thinks this is the best thing she's done. He ate it. 
I'm just like, yeah, that thing got food good. poison. I don't know. I don't know about that. That's, well, I mean, are you going to tell your mom that it's not good? Or are you just going to let her go on with it? If I was him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, in general. I'm like, no, no, that ain't it. We got to we gotta season dock this thing up a little bit. So. I mean, well, she's not going to get any better if you don't say anything about it. How about the guy who said Rihanna started? Who said that? I didn't <gasps> hear that, that one. She just had a baby. Who said that? People are stupid. No, I didn't hear about that one. I did see where Lizzo was playing um, James Madison's flute mm-hmm. um, from the Library of Congress. They let her uh, blow a couple notes on there. Is it, like a, is it a 400-year-old flute yeah, or something, something like that? Old. Crystal flute? <clears throat> and it was funny because, I mean, man, I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. It was a crystal flute. She was up there. She was playing it. The fact that she could play the flute. Like, yeah, that, you didn't know that? No, no, I saw her on Saturday Night Live, yeah. and that's why I noticed. But the fact that she can actually play the flute and, like, play melodies, play songs, and she plays it on her um, albums and stuff is pretty cool. But people were like, oh, uh, why are we going to disrespect our forefathers by playing the flute? Somebody was like, hold on, first and foremost, mm. whose forefathers? Because it ain't mine. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the dialogue that was going on, I'm talking about, dude, it was just a flute, like, Nobody's sitting there upset. Not like she had the Declaration of Independence out there and was, I don't know, scribing it on there or twerking on the Declaration or nothing. She was playing a flute. She played like three or four notes. Every time. But uh, And then on top of that, yeah, Rihanna um, just got announced that she's going to be doing the Super Bowl this year. Good for her. I'll be playing. I'll be tuning in for that. Crystal Flute and the Republicans are acting a fool. She's a classically trained. He owned over 100 slaves. <laughs> He was turning in his grave. <laughs> Let him turn, because he's going to be turning a lot. It's like, why they have that gal up there playing that crystal flute? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, people be tripping, Damien. You're right. Uh, I mean, I thought it was cool, you know. Something for the culture. She playing a crystal flute. And she, she's fairly talented, too, as mm-hmm. far as that. And I didn't realize that the, when she first started singing, I didn't realize that was her. But she sings and raps. So, I mean, she's she's pretty good. She might be a little... Eccentric? Ascent, uh, Over the top? Exposed. Oh. <laughs> she shows herself a little bit too much I sometimes. But other than that, she's all, a good artist. All of, them, all of them show themselves a little bit too much nowadays. Well, I guess that's a norm. Um, I was scrolling through randomly today, just looking up for stuff for tonight. It is International Podcast Day. So if you have a favorite podcast, like ours, right? Because we're your favorite. If not, go ahead and drop some more on here. We always like listening to the different things and getting different ideas. Those boys from um, Earn Your Leisure. I've been following them for like the last couple of years. Um, they're actually over in London now with a um, financial literacy course. They're teaming up with a couple other guys in that space. So um, it, it's cool to see um, when they first got started to where they are now. They have a lot of different celebrities that they sit down. They do interviews with. They did some stuff with Rick Ross. They did some stuff with Steve Harvey. Um, he was on there, so uh, just talking about stocks, talking about businesses, talking about um, just really how to how to grow generational wealth. Um, so them being able to take that podcast from where they were at, and not only just have a following here in the U.S. now to be able to take it across seas, over to U.K. over to these different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it, it's it's cool. So hats well, off to those guys. Yeah, I don't really have a favorite one. Like I said, I'll watch the uh, Bailey. Serenity? I can't remember her last name. Oh, I'm going to look it up. Hold on. And then there's another one that I watch. Most of mine are on YouTube. I don't necessarily listen to them on a podcast channel, but they're on YouTube, so I watch their videos. Your boy, uh, Kev on Kev stage. Kev on stage. Him and, I need, we need to start listening to his wife's. <coughs> him and his wife's. Um, yeah, I got it right. Bailey Sarian. Um, podcast. It's called The Love Hour, and I think they're still doing it. I'm going to mention this book here in a minute, too. Um, talks about different... Uh, problems and situations that arise in marriages and how they deal with it and different ways to get through it um just a and it says it talks and and discusses a lot of different topics that you wouldn't think to bring up maybe hard discussions and whatnot that they've had talked um brought up to them because they grew up in a very christian home both of them both of them grew up in a very christian based or baptist based home and um even the first little introduction not even the first chapter i'm just now getting into it i'll talk about it now since you got it um him and his wife just put out a book called marriage is hard thank you uh oh, i'm sorry marriage be hard so if you know if you follow kev on stage he was just he's upcoming somewhat he's doing tours and stuff now but he has a little um 
Facebook page and he does comedy and does skits and stuff like that. Um, him and his wife came out with a book last month and I think it's already um, on the New York bestseller mm -hmm. list. So I wanted to check it out. And like I said, it just says in here that they're going to cover different topics and it says uh, 12 conversations to keep you laughing, loving, and learning with your partner. So they go through different conversations and topics that might not have been discussed um, previously between you and your spouse and some that are just kind of taboo. Like, so they said they, bo they both grew up in a Christian, uh, Christian home. So one of the things that they were taught, you never have sex before marriage, obviously. That's what they were taught. But nobody ever really said anything how not to have sex before marriage, if you think about it. Because there's all kinds of temptations okay. in the world. So they kind of delve into that a little bit more. And some of the other conversations, I just started it. So as I keep going through it, I'll, I'll um, update you guys on what else is in here. But, I mean, it's a, so far, it looks like it's pretty good. And it tells it both from both perspectives. So you it's to, almost kind of like the interview. Club? No, no. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> no. This is just one that I looked and I wanted to start reading. So Go ahead. Call up Teal and, and Imani and... I tried doing a book club. We didn't get very far. Unless we got, we got, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I think we all got a lot going on. We can't be doing a book Call club. Call up Tara. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> we don't have no. No, we can't. All right, that's fine. <laughs> what else you got here? What is it? Do you put Adam Levine? I did put it on here because you know it's been in the news. I don't. And then when we talk about current events. Come I don't on be now. Following these celebrities and what they be going through, what they cheating in scandals. Cause Shaq's still standing behind him. He just posted his thing saying that he still stands behind him too. So if you haven't, Adam Levine of Maroon Five has been apparently accused of cheating on his wife, and he admitted that he has been um, flirting heavily with some girl on Instagram. I don't know if she's a model or an influencer, what she is, but apparently the girl says that they've been talking. For about a year or so um and she's saying you know obviously he's going back and forth this and that so he admits that he said that he may have crossed the line i don't know what that means but it kind of you know brings up the question what necessarily is cheating is considered cheating i think a conversation that you wouldn't tell your significant other is it is cheating because it opens the door jeez because then you gotta bump him in with uh who's the, who's the uh coach from the celtics is it the celtics Oh, I don't know which one you're talking about. There's too many well, things. Well, with Neil Long. And then Shaq went on there talking about he can't comment because he was a serial cheater. Who? Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, well, that might be why he's standing behind Adam. I don't know. Like I said, I can't comment. And then Neo on. with his wife. Uh, like I said, these, these celebrities be out here. and I mean, it's just, it is what, the, the thing is that they think that it's harmless. And that's why I want, you know, want to just bring it up. What's your opinion on it? What is, what considers, what is considered cheating to you? Anything you wouldn't tell your significant other. So what I just said. Yeah. Okay. Are you just, are you just mimicking me? No, I'm really? for real. I ain't trying to get my house burned down and Lisa left eyed and you know where I sleep and you be making meals. And I ain't trying to want and watching all these crazy serial killer movies. Like. I'm cool. I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. Or the fact that you love your wife. That too. You know, I hope that would be the forefront reason. But yes. it's cool. It's cool. But anyway, that's just, that's my opinion. If anything that you open the door for something else to wiggle in there and get in between your marriage or in between your relationship, that's what I think is considered cheating. And apparently that's what he's done. So it said, the most recent thing that I saw, it said that him and his wife are still working through whatever it is. Because I, I don't know how long they've been married, but they do have kids. So it's not something you can just throw away. Hopefully, it's not something you would want to just throw away. So. See, that shows you how little I knew. I knew nothing about Adam Levine besides he was in Maroon 5, and he did the Super Bowl a few years ago. He pretty much is Maroon 5 for the most part. Did you know that they had a, a, a black person in their, in, their, in their band? No. Yeah, he plays keyboard. See? Mm. Shows how much I know. I can't tell you his name, but he's there. But anyway, moving on. Mr. Brett Favre. He's always in something. He's in another thing now. They <laughs> said that um, another one of his charities that supports kids and cancer patients was accused of donating the funds to his former college. This is coming from um, ESPN. They said that um, his, one of his organizations has been accused of giving his alma mater, the University of Southern Mississippi, over $130,000 that was initially for cancer patients. It states that the school received the donations around the same time that he was soliciting welfare funds from the state of Mississippi to also build a volleyball facility at USM. 
which just happens to be the same school that his daughter goes to. Of course it is. So, um, nepotism is it's alive and well. Yeah, so I think the more they start digging into this, um, the more it's going to come out. And I've been seeing things in the news. People are like, oh, and Michael Vick was doing this. He was on every news station. And and I think a lot of it was because of um, Michael Vick, who he was at the time. Um, he was at the height of his career. He was like the face of the NFL at that moment. And I think Brett is just going under the radar right now because – He's been out of the game for how long, officially? Because, you know, he kept going back and forth, mm-hmm. what Tom Brady's about to start doing. But um, I think now, because of this world we live in with social media, that now they're going to start to um, do more investigating because, you know, once when someone gets that, that little bit of dirt on you, retweet here, share there, mm-hmm. they're not going to let up off the pressure. They're going to keep that, that information out there, and they're going to be asking questions. So now we got ESPN um, giving the reports, so – It'll be interesting to see uh, what comes from this one. She well, plays on the volleyball team. She, he's probably got the money. Why can't you donate to the school and then also give that money to the cancer kids? Like I don't, you know, the ca- cancer patients. I don't understand. So you want him to go in his own pocket and? If you really care about your alma mater like that, yeah, you I mean, would. I'm not saying that from Bob's standpoint. I'm just saying probably how he's thinking. Well, why would I do that if I already got a fund? Where people because are- that's fraud. You tell him that. Don't tell me. <laughs> I know what it is. I'm just, I'm just thinking what he might say. Oh, I'd, you want me to write a check out of my money? I don't know. I'm sure this is going to cost him a lot of the stuff that he's already had. I'm sure. You, is, he, is he in the Hall of Fame? I don't know nothing about no Brett Favre or sports or football. I ain't even got a favorite team. I'm just reporting what ESPN was talking about. I just know fraud is bad. Stealing's bad, too. <laughs> he did both. That's the same. <laughs> Misrepresentation of funds is what is what he's gonna say. Oh, I didn't I didn't know oh, I was he'll right, play stupid. I didn't know I was writing that out of that account. <laughs> he'll play stupid and I'm sure he'll get away with it. Uh, but, uh yeah, we'll see. But regardless, stealing from children, stealing from cancer patients. Not even that cancer. Stealing case. from from welfare. I mean, come on, my guy. What was that? He was stealing from welfare. The same it was just the same thing. It was or? like the water fund or, or or something that was down there. Because you know right now that um they have an issue in Mississippi with the water. People will not spend their own money when they can spend others. It's disgusting. Exactly. That's, that's what true. I was. That's what I was saying. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's why why would I spend my money when I can spend someone else's? That's in a song. OPM. Wow. Other people's money. I heard it. I got it. No, nah, you thinking of OPP? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. I know what it was. Okay. Speaking about money. Jesus. The U.S. Department of Education just recently changed its guidelines for which borrowers actually qualify for President Biden's debt. I told relief you program. we weren't going to get. No, no, whoa, 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 hold up. I think we're still. We're, I don't know. About when you. I checked it, I was eligible. I'm, I'm eligible for for um, some loan forgiveness, but um, they said that uh, the reversal will affect the fortunes of millions of student loan borrowers. Um, the department quietly. Like it was, it was real low key. It was low key. They didn't even say much about it. I just saw like an article come across and was like, "Let me read this real quick. This is interesting." But um, so they quietly changed the rules. You ready for this? Yesterday, of course, because they don't they want people the rules to know. Yesterday, saying borrowers with federal student loans not held by the um, education department cannot obtain a one-time debt relief by consolidating these loans into a direct loan. So a lot of the um, loans that people had out, whether they were private or they were held by other departments that weren't the um, education department, yeah, they had thought that they would be able to get um, up to 10, 20,000 of their loans forgiven. I think there was a way that they were going to be able to um, consolidate some of these loans through the education department, but there's a whole like lawsuit going on right now. So now the Biden administration has to go back to the drawing board and has to roll back some of these policies that they said. Uh, said it could potentially affect roughly 800,000 borrowers. So this is only for not, you said not private companies that you, like if you got a loan from the bank or something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing. It's I, tricky. We get on this often on the show, just talking about the education system here in um, the United States. The fact that they would let, an 18 year old take out rack up thousands hundreds of thousands i got a few friends that got over a hundred thousand dollars in in student loan debt oh yeah they will never pay this debt off but you think and you have to under, i think they understand that but they know that the they're biggest, not going to it's the biggest scam like even looking like even if you make your minimum payment mm-hmm. the last 10 years 
the amount of interest that you will pay on your loan is going to be more than what the principal is. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't also, at the same time, too, with stuff like that, it doesn't affect you, like, you know, if you were to apply for credit with something else. Because I know when I was doing loans for a small portion and then you ran a credit report, just a base credit report, if you see your student loans, they tell you not to worry about that. They don't look at those anyway. Yeah, because they're going to give you the loan amount because it's like, oh, yeah, because in in America, it's like, oh, you need to go to college because that was the big status symbol. Um years ago even i can't even say years ago i mean even now people like oh i gotta go to an ivy league gotta go to a prestigious institution to have a diploma that says oh i i went to this school here but then you come out and as we're seeing with this this economy unless you're going for like a brain surgeon or you can't even say lawyers nowadays just like you got to have a high specialty to Mm -hmm. be able to come out to be able to make that money just coming out with the general studies education, even business marketing. General studies is nothing but does yeah, high school but, diploma now. But yeah, unless, unless you're just getting into like a trade job, I love mm-hmm. I love the trades. I do too. Yeah, if I, I say it all the time, I didn't play. If I didn't play basketball in college, I would have I would have went to a trade. I would have I would have been like an electrician. You know, I I, I, I'd be up in the rafters. I, I like I like the uh, the process behind electricians and, and what what that is. But I mean, trades and plumbers. Um, masonaries. Which those are needed more now Welders. than anything anyway. Yeah, because we don't have them. looking now, like people are always looking for just people that, that have these trades and these skill sets, but everybody went to school to get a degree in business marketing because everybody was like, oh, I'm going to open a business, but school doesn't teach you about that's it. And that's the crazy thing about it. You go to school to, to get you in a position to be able to make money while they're putting you in debt while you're in school. But then the professor that's teaching these business classes has never ran a business, yep. has never been an entrepreneur, can't yep. even tell you about how to, what the steps you need to take to be able to start a business. But we're taking out loans to sit in these classes so they can read these textbooks. But they can tell you that that paper is not worded right or not cited right. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so, and now we're back in this position now and. And everybody's hollering. I mean, it's, it's a it's a catch twenty two because on some sides people are like, no, 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 y'all took out the loan. Y'all need to pay these loans back. Uh, if y'all took the money out, then nobody needs to be bailing y'all out. Airlines always getting bailouts. Y'all weren't saying big, that when you got these big dangerous businesses. Checks. Yeah, big businesses always getting bailed out. So you know, I'm not gonna sit here and say, nah, nah, we're just gonna pay these back. I'm a, I'm gonna enjoy the helping hand that comes out exactly. from these loans because it's ridiculous. I mean, that's a good point. Why would the system teach you to escape the system? That's true. And that's you very hit, true. Yeah, you hitting the nail right on the head on that mm-hmm. one because I mean we, we have these conversations often. Um, even to a point, I posted that um, you you sent me that that uh, CNN yeah article. Um, I don't know where they get these numbers from. I need to know who's donating six hundred twenty some dollars monthly. That was that was big cap. Was, you, I think he's doing it as a write-off. No, I, I don't even think it was real. I think they just put that out there because it was like, oh yeah, here's a here's a diagram of a 25 year old who's making over a hundred thousand dollars, who's very responsible with money. And we're looking at it, it's like you're paying what eight hundred dollars in rent, which is probably about average back then, 2018. Not right now. Well, not he said he was in New York too, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh paying, yeah, no, that's not who's true. Paying eight hundred dollars in rent in he, New York. He lives in a closet. Yeah, he live in a broom in a closet. closet. <laughs> Got to go down the Harry hall to Potter use the bathroom. Kind of yeah, who's paying eight hundred dollars in rent? I don't look up there. That's what I'm saying. And then they said like his his uh, phone bill was forty dollars. His internet was twenty. Uh, he was spending two hundred dollars on groceries. That's probably about accurate. Two hundred dollars on groceries. We did that the other day for the month. Yeah. No, you spent two hundred dollars on groceries for like first two weeks of the month. Oh, true. Yeah. True. You tell me you could eat, you could eat for two hundred dollars for a month. Well, I mean, if he's listen, living in a closet, he could only eat what's so big anyway. Eating, eating four for fours every night? Nah, I don't believe it. But um, yeah, even to the point where the financial literacy—I mean, we preach on it all the time. I mean, it, it's got to start at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we can't depend on school systems to sit there yeah. and, and teach us because, like like Nick said. Uh, the system is only going to teach us. Oh yeah, this is how you balance a checkbook. Who's using checkbooks? checkbooks? Nobody's yeah. using no checkbooks uh, nowadays. They're not talking about like getting into like the real uh, nitty gritty of things. These kids like, can't even sign their names. So what would it matter if you had a checkbook? They can't even docu sign names nowadays. Jeez. They say ramen, lentils, and rice doesn't. Yeah, pretty much. 
just yeah, and, it, and, it, and it is unrealistic, even to the point now where coming out. I mean, it's it's nice. It's nice to sit around thinking, oh yeah, they raised minimum wage, but everything else is raised too. You had to. Everything else went up. We couldn't make a living on seven twenty five. We're barely making a living now on whatever. You know, what was it now? Fifteen dollars. <laughs> So in certain places, in I still see signs. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, now hiring $11 an hour. It's like, can't live off of that when, especially at like the fast food spots, yeah. if you're only paying 11 but then the combo <clears throat> meal costs $14, $15. That doesn't make sense. Make it make sense. That's why people, that's why they say, you know, you don't eat healthy and whatnot, too. It costs $9 for a salad. McDonald's has had a dollar menu forever. Uh, yeah, even even to eat healthy in, in this in this society. Is, Organic's is like three times more expensive than just a regular produce or whatever. Like, when you go and buy, you remember the first time we tried to go and buy groceries? We had no list, didn't know what we were doing. We just bought a whole bunch of random stuff. Probably couldn't make a meal out of whatever we had. And now we finally make lists. It's a lot more expensive when you make lists and you plan out a meal. But the food doesn't even. Has anybody else noticed? Like a bag of lettuce, the moment, the moment you open it up, it goes bad in two days. Yeah. Like I get a thing of tomatoes on Monday. By Wednesday, the tomatoes are wilted. So you better eat a, a salad so, every meal. So yeah, it's like I don't know if the food. I just remember, like when I was a kid, food used to last a whole lot longer. It feels these aren't the same preservatives. They these had are as not. A kid. I don't know what. I don't know what they're putting in it. But like, yeah, we got to go get salad like three times in a week. Did you see? It was there's a post or something. It's like, dang, I forgot to get the salad that I'll throw away in two weeks. Yeah, I forgot. but even like the the serving sizes. My dad was talking the other day about. It. He went and got some orange juice. He said the orange yeah. there's less orange juice in the container and it's more expensive. Yep. Yeah, see, Karen said, "Yeah, what is that about? I don't know. I something's going on. We went into the uh, what did we go into the pandemic and came back out, and it was like this is different." Speaking of McDonald's, a little segue there. McDonald's is releasing the new Happy Meal for adults to recreate one of the most nostalgic experiences. So the tagline was, "You're never too old for a Happy Meal," or at least that is what McDonald's is banking on. Um, the fast food juggernaut this week announced plans to introduce the adult-oriented meals. First off, if they're giving me an adult Happy Meal, I hope they're coming with Happy Meal prices. Because I don't want to be spending $15, $16, $20 really? Just, for a Happy Meal. <laughs> they're taking your food and putting it in a bucket. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. But it's going it, to come with a free toy. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's an incentive designed to work off the nostalgia of the restaurant's famous red cardboard boxes. Like, hold on. Wait, I thought they were doing the Halloween buckets. Is this not that? I don't know, but I remember when, like, as kids, it was a treat to go to fast food. Was. Like, you had to either get good grades, you had to have done something spectacular, and it's like, hey, you want to go get, you want to go get a happy meal? <laughs> yeah. It was, it was very all the moms just said, you got McDonald's money? You yes, got, you got yes, fast food do. money, so. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they're coming out with um, it, it's a the cactus plant flea market box is a collaboration between McDonald's and the famous streetwear brand. It will roll out to participating stores on October third. Don't think we're gonna see that here in, in Roanoke. It sounds like it's a Midwest thing. They don't participate in anything. Yeah, here. it sounds like it's gonna be out west or something. But um, unlike the smaller menu items included in the classic Happy Meal, the Cactus Plant Flea Market box will feature either a Big Mac or a ten-piece chicken McNugget, as well as a soda and fries. The fries don't even taste the same like. No, they you gotta get either. a good one. You gotta get it. Their fries, I will say, have been the most consistent from '90s to now. Everywhere else has changed. Wendy's used to have really good fries before they changed it to whatever they got now. Burger King used to be great. Who else? Arby's has been consistent, too, because they don't change from the curly fries. We didn't have Arby's here as a kid when I was growing up. I don't, I don't it was remember. rallies. Rallies yeah, is what I don't, we Yeah, had. I don't remember Arby's. But um, inside the box will also be one of four collectible figurines of McDonald's mascots, Grimace, the Hamburglar, and Birdie, as well as a cactus buddy. Who was Birdie? I don't know. Oh, the bird. Duh. Hello. They said that's a hard hit of nostalgia. It's like a drug. It I'm is. just going to say they ain't swaying me enough to go there and get one because I can guarantee the ice cream machine is still going to be broke. I'll get one. You go ahead. I'll... I just wanted to come in that little Halloween bucket because they said they were doing the Halloween and, buckets again. And the toys. The toys used to be top tier back in the, the day. Remember when they did the Beanie Baby ones? Yeah, but I remember my aunt. She used to work at, um, used to work at Burger King way back in the day. 
they had the Simpsons. Um, yeah. The Simpsons, like, they were nice. Uh, I, think, I think my parents still got them at the house, like, in a bin or something. But, like, they had the whole family, and they were, like, hard plastic. Mm-hmm. And, like, those toys, it, it took some thought behind it. Well, the toys now you get you gotta you gotta paste the stickers on there and they're just raggedy they they don't they don't hold weight no more because people don't care like they used to in the nineties. Grimace is actually a giant taste bud. I never knew that. I thought he was a purple people leader. Oh, <laughs> Damien said TF is the point of that. What kind of toy? Pokemon cards? Man, <laughs> it, they just trying to build up the nostalgia because they know that sales have been down this year. I guess. Then bring back the old food. Get some of my nostalgia. I don't give a crap about a toy. Braden's not going to care about a toy. Nah. He'll eat it. That's it. Nah, I don't think they're doing that in Sweden either. So, I don't know. I mean. Why don't y'all not have, like, y'all don't have, like, fried food in Sweden, is it? I don't know. But, uh, huh. giant taste bud. I want something, learn new, something every day. new Mm-hmm. But, um, I got to jump on this stock talk. Go it's ahead. been a crazy time in the market the last two weeks. Um, crazy good? Nah, I mean. I don't look at your 401k from work. I can tell you that. Mine has been okay. <laughs> did you check it this week? I haven't checked it this week. Yeah, the, but the last time that you said that, mine did fine. Oh, uh, you must have. They must got you in a different portfolio because uh, uh, I'm going to touch on Carnival Cruise first and foremost. So, um, as we know, the pandemic, people aren't really cruising. Mm-hmm. Um, shares of Carnival fell below their pandemic lows today. After the cruising company purchased third quarter earnings that revealed higher costs associated with inflation. So we've been talking about this every show, inflation, recession, just throwing words out there. We knew it was going to come because even back with the stimulus checks, we just didn't know when it was going to happen. Yeah. We've been talking about, hey, all this money is getting infused into um, the economy. Um even even when the feds was like, Oh no, 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 we're doing we're doing good. Uh we're we're, we're we're seeing we're seeing growth. People are back to work. The pandemic's over. That's not the case anymore. We've we've seen numbers that from hyperinflation, where everything has just been escalated to the point where now things are starting to hit the fan. Now we're seeing we're seeing actual real numbers come out to the point where it's affecting companies in general. Um, so Carnival Cruise, uh, like we said, um, shares fell today. Uh, because of inflation, supply chain disruptions, which you, which you have been seeing, um, stuff's still sitting out there in the ocean on ships. Really? Yeah. Uh, they said that uh, supply chain disruptions, maintenance of health and safety protocols, shares of Carnival was down around 20%. This also affected um, the region cruise lines and other mm. cruise lines also. But the fact that the stock fell to a 52-week low, um, so it was about $7.01, um, oh wow! To this lowest, we're talking about COVID numbers. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of companies now getting back to those points where the pandemic had first kicked off, which is that's that's scary times right there. <laughs> and and Carnival isn't the only company that uh, that we're seeing this with. Uh, to the point where it said that um, the Dow tumbled 500 points today um, to end September down more than eight percent. So. This is the lowest that it's been um, all year. I thought it dropped like seven or something the other day. I mean, that was the other day, but now we're actually to the lowest point. Okay. So when we talk about the S&P 500, mm-hmm. uh, the big companies that make up um, S&P, so stocks fell in a choppy um, trade Friday as Wall Street prepared to close out its terrible week, month, and quarter that brought the S&P 500 to its newest lows of 2020. So, I mean, before... Everything was shooting straight up. Uh, I'm not going to bore y'all with any charts here. I can't even share my screen. But y'all could think, well, everything. I was like, oh, yeah, no, we're doing great now. Stocks were hitting all-time highs a few months back. Amazon, Google, like all these companies are down. They're down bad right now, even to the point where Apple is down. Because mm. they even came out where they were saying about um, their supply chain issues where they're not even going to be manufacturing as many phones as they were used to having. Um, Nick said, all this is happening right before the midterms. Absolutely. Um, scary times, man. Like, uh, Just keep saying it. Um, an inflation report closely watched by the Federal Reserve released Friday shows that prices continue to increase at a rapid pace. So as we talk about food prices going up, even to the point where CarMax, who's renting cars right now? 
Nobody's thinking of written cars. We have a bigger issues where people can't even get affordable housing right now because of the numbers of um, rent prices and interest rates for housing is so high. So a lot of these major companies are taking a hit to the point Google's trading for under um, $100. Really? Yeah. Uh, I told you to get on some Starbucks the I other day. I finally got it. Got one share. I encourage you to continue buying Starbucks. Um, as an investor, this is investor's paradise because we know – Eventually, the stocks will go up. I like to tell people, don't don't even worry about the price now. I mean, buy it, buy it when the stuff is, is going down because five years, ten years, if you're a long-term um, holder, I mean, it, it's going to recover. Should I buy Google? Yeah, I'm definitely. I'm definitely yeah, going to pick up some you. Google. You're here. my stock guru on up, this. I mean, don't don't buy nothing right now. We'll see what it's doing here uh, next week. But, yeah, I like the dollar cost average in because I mean the prices are low now even if it continues dropping if you got a little extra money you can always buy buy more because mm -hmm. my thing is I ain't trying to get rich tomorrow this is this is where you could just build out nice long uh, portfolios right now um, Nike shares even fell sharply I, I put my on on the Nike mm -hmm. game a few years back you should be up but uh yeah if you're looking at, at adding to your Nike portfolio Now's a good time. Um, the shares fell sharply in its worst day since twenty uh, since two thousand one, mm. after the company reported that sales increased, but supply chain and inventory issues um, hampered the bottom line in its uh, first fiscal uh, quarter. The stock was down about thirteen percent. They were talking about that. Um, they don't. They don't have. They have oh, too much inventory just sitting on shelves right now. That they can't even get rid of them. People aren't them. buying like that. Yeah, because, I mean, there's other things like food and housing. and well, That's the thing. If the price is going up on everything else, you don't really have the money to pay on um, leisures and, and whatnot, so trips and everything but, like that. But then on the on the reverse side, um, people that have the money, now's a great time to travel if, if you can't. Because uh, I know I'm, I'm always on Groupon just seeing what kind of deals and things are out there. But... Yeah, they had trips to like the Dominican, all inclusive yep. resorts. It's like sixty dollars a night, all inclusive. And they're decent resorts. It's not like yeah. you're staying in the slums or anything like that. We've been to these resorts and they're they're very nice. So you know, you just got to catch it when you can. Like you said, if you have the means to travel right now, this would be your best time to do it. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm I'm a stock enthusiast, so I'm always following the market, seeing what what plays, what opportunities are out there, uh, my option players that are out there. They've been eating, eating big. Um, by Profit Rockets Group. They've been, they've been talking about. Um, they say historically in September the market always goes down. So, yeah, they, they've been, they've been hollering about this since, since the end of August. So now we're actually in this, in this area and seeing it. So the gains that I've been seeing from them and the group has been crazy. Because. Mm. Yeah, if you know how to play stocks, you know how to ride that wave. I'd can. like to get into it a little bit more. I know you're building one for Braden and stuff, and I'd like to, to know at the very least what we're talking about when you have those conversations I got, I got, with I got him. a whole stock course. I know you do. I've, I've got to find pushing. time to do it. We got his time. I got That's a not all course. we got his time. Are you, are you sitting there watching Jeffrey Dahmer that he ain't doing that? You could be getting some of this stock action. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not funny. Eh, I'll give it to you. But uh, but yeah, uh, I encourage anybody that that is even thinking about stocks, just yeah, look out there, I and mean, you don't need a lot of money to be able to, to start a little investment portfolio. Um, twenty five dollars to here, twenty five there, fifty here, just any little extra that you can just throw into something and um and, and hold on to for a few years, because like I said, the market always recovers, it always goes back up. But uh, now now's a good time to just get in. And just start buying, building out some of these long-term portfolios. Because they're gonna pay, like you said, they're gonna pay out eventually. You just have to have the patience. I think that's what a lot of people don't have is patience with it. And my thing, I tell people, that, go with the, the sit in and forget it strategy. Even if you can just um, take some of your paycheck, um, however much you feel comfortable with doing, and just put into like an account where you don't have to worry about trading. You can just buy something. Like I said, uh, apps like Robinhood, Webull. Um, those things you could even do fractional shares where if you don't want to buy a, a whole stock in something you could buy like um twenty five dollars worth and then build it up over time um i love the background huh. sounds oh thanks <laughs> but uh huh <sighs> colleague done found the button she over here pushing them now but um yeah just just getting anything we could just build into it uh yeah 
do something that's going to pay you later instead of going to the club or buying that that bottle or doing some unnecessary shopping or doing something just buy you a little stock here first and of there. all shopping is never unnecessary yeah, it is when no it's not when you can buy into the companies you sent me that uh that meme the other day when the guy was like yeah, don't uh, don't go to the lake when you can oh. own the lake. <laughs> that was a little clubhouse thing. The guy, those gurus, always yeah. talking about. No, oh, you gotta you gotta gotta buy wealth. Who did it's say? Like, it's like no, don't fly on the plane. You can buy the plane. You'll have to <laughs> you'll have to post that one because that one was pretty funny. He said if you invest in yourself, then you own yourself, and that's better than anything else. Or I something mean, I, like I, that. I, mean, it I was always crazy. always go with the takeaway from the what he was saying. It. But I mean, it, it does make sense, especially in times now because. You don't want to look five years down the line and be like, man, I remember when Apple was trading under mm-hmm. trading under $200. I could have got me a share or two, and then we look up. Because, I mean, especially with these bigger companies, we know Google's going to be there because how many times a day do we use Google? My Every phone day. is Google anyway. So, yeah, mm-hmm. just saying, like, hey, I got I got a share of Google. Not knowing what it might do in a year or two. I know or somebody 10 who years. said that they were there when it started. It was like trading at a couple dollars. Yeah, it like Google's. Like time. we talk about, like the big titans of um, the industries, like the Amazons and the Googles. Even like Tesla had a split here recently. I mean, Tesla was trading up close to a thousand dollars a share. And now it's back down to, um, I think, right under two hundred dollars or in that in that ballpark. But. Tell you in a second. Yeah, Tesla's two sixty five. When they split, it was trading right around about three hundred. So, yeah, just grabbing up some stocks and just holding on to them, just getting familiar with it. Because one thing we can't say is we don't have the knowledge nowadays. Because we got these phones attached to us twenty four seven. Just take some time instead of watching a whole Netflix series or binge watching. Just take a couple a couple minutes out your day just to. Just to do some research on something that's going to pay you back later down the line. Blue chip stocks. Absolutely. You'll have to do a longer segment on stocks one day. I mean, I got a whole stock talk. I mean, I might do some little um, side videos here and upload them. And then we need um, to start working on our side. Yeah. Yeah. So people that are interested in it, uh, I'll post my stock, uh, stock talk course again, where people can go in because, um, yeah, these prices, I don't think they're going to be this low ever again once this recovery starts up. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's good to see where it can go, at the very least. Yeah, definitely. So, but I think we are going to hop off here for today. We appreciate you guys tuning in with us and conversating with us. Um, like always, if you've got something that you want us to talk on, please let us know. Send us a message. Comment on here. We'll eventually see it. Um, and we'll make sure that we do what we can to get it on um, the podcast. So um, we will talk to you all later. Have a fun, safe, and rainy weekend. That's probably how it's going to stay. But um, if you're out doing something, just be safe. Best day starts tomorrow because it's the first day of October, which is the best month. I don't know about all that. It is. But anyway, you guys have a great night, and we will talk to you later.